I come home from work. I was working at a convalescent hospital, so I had an all white uniform on. My dad asked me a question and I gave him the wrong answer. And he just busted my nose completely. And uh, blood was all over the all white uniform. I'll never forget that. My mom comes in, she sees all the blood all over the place and she just passed out, she fainted. I made up my mind from that moment on, uh, at 14, if, you know, if, if he does this again, I'm gonna kill him. Today is the birth story of the legend C.T. Fletcher and how he became who he is today with the story of his father. A very, very interesting story that not many people have heard. C.T. Fletcher is the son of a preacher and for his whole life, he promised his father he would never become who he was. And the irony is, as we all know, that C.T. Fletcher is one of the biggest preachers today in this world. He preaches obsession, motivation, inspiration, hard work, tenacity, and so much more. But this story will explain the heartbreaking motivations behind that. So thank you to CT for sharing this story. Today's video was made possible by the end of summer sale at mulliganbrothers.com where you can get the Rise and Grind t-shirt, the hardest worker in the room t-shirts and the Inspire Chains hoodies. Buy one, get one free using code sale with the link in the description. And the Memento Mori poster, a poster to remind you that you will die one day and be not a journal, a heavily discounted down below to help you succeed in life. But before that, let's watch this amazing video with CT Fletcher. Your childhood, I know you, you faced, uh, in, in your words, I hope you don't mind me saying this, an abusive father. It's quite <laughs> a difficult sit situation in the home, is that right? Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because you, you said if I don't mind, it's not, I, don't, I don't mind if you say it at all, and I think that's a very good definition. It's nothing that I haven't said myself. My dad uh, was a preacher, <laughs> which is you know a contrast, big time. You know, supposed to be uh, helping people and saving souls, and guiding people toward heaven. And his mission, he always told me that if I wasn't you know, doing the same thing that he was doing, he wanted me to be a, a preacher also, that uh, my life would amount to absolutely nothing, zero. So anything else that I was doing besides what he wanted me to do was a failure as far as he was concerned. So if I did anything outside of his guidelines, which were super strict because everything at the time was a sin, uh, liking girls was a sin. So <laughs> my dad, my dad found a, a little love note I wrote to a girl in church one Sunday and it said, you know, uh, I like you, do you like me? You know, check this box, you know? <laughs> and uh, he found the note and, and uh, proceeded to whoop my ass in church in front of everybody to teach me a good lesson about liking girls. So that kind of stuff. That it was like it was like a physical thing, like he oh, yeah. be you, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the the norm was, you know, just taking his leather belt and, and beating you with that. But that's that's just a regular whooping. But it would go from uh, the belt to a fist. So do you remember as a kid the, the worst moment? Yeah, I absolutely remember the worst moments. The moment that I decided that if this happens again, I'm gonna kill him. So I, I remember it. I came home uh, from work. I, I've always worked. I had a, a job. I was 14 years old. And I had a full-time job. And I come home from work, and I, it was working at a convalescent hospital, so I had an all-white uniform on. My dad asked me a question, and I gave him the wrong answer, and he busted, just busted my nose completely, and uh, blood was all over the all-white uniform. I'll never forget that. My mom comes in. She sees all the blood all over the place, and she just passed out. She fainted. My dad looks at me and goes, see what you did? <laughs> so yeah, that, that was, uh, you know, I made, I made up my mind from that moment on, uh, at 14, if, you know, if, if he does this again, I'm gonna kill him, so. Were you a big, bigger guy at the time? Did you mind, were you like sort of outweighing your father at that point? No, no, uh, my dad was pretty big. He, 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 never, he didn't lift weights at all, but he looked like he did. He, you know, he was built, veins, everything, abs, six pack, everything but never lifted weights at all. But he weighed about 225, just his normal body weight, 6'1". I don't know, that's a big guy yeah, to be beating on, big a, for on a not kid, lifting yeah. weights yeah. at all, for not a weightlifter at all, but everybody thought he did. Um, and I was about 160 pounds, yeah. Wow, okay, and so uh, 
you know, your mother was there as well, and you said that she was like a support for you as yeah, well. Yeah, big mean, time. So how how would that dynamic work? So after after your father had beaten you, would your would your mum come in and support you? Was was she able to do that, or was she <laughs> would she be putting herself in the firing line as well? Uh, you know, this is a, what when she came in and, and fainted, that you know that stopped them. You know, it was you know, oh my god, you know, look what you did to your mother. So that stopped the, the beating. But um, this is the one point of contention that me and my mother had. Um, I loved her to death. I, I, I thought she was an angel on earth. I still think that she's responsible for, for me being sane at all. I'd be completely insane if it wasn't for my mother. Uh, and I had my moments. <laughs> but uh, she would not interfere, you know, like run in there and say, don't do that or stop, you know, she, she would. But afterwards, she would come in and try to pick up the pieces and try to make the home uh, livable. And she would come in like after this particular incident, I had to go to the hospital and, uh, you know, doctors and they said, well, how did this happen? And I told them exactly what happened. My dad did it right now. And they were like, oh, wow. And, you know, this is child abuse. Even back then, you could get away with a lot of stuff back then you couldn't do now. But uh, back then it was still considered child abuse because degree of my uh, injuries. So they said, if you want, we can have them arrested. We'll go to the post office. We'll pick him up and we'll arrest him and take him to jail. And I was like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, arrest that motherfucker, you know, take him to jail, throw him under the fucking jail. I just wanted to embarrass him in front of his face, hell yeah. And my mom was like, no, please don't do that. No, that's your father. And that, you know, that pissed me off. <laughs> I'm like, you know, man, you're supposed to be on my side. You're supposed to be on my corner, man. And, but, you know, she, she, after, you know, my mom's tears didn't give me to do anything. If she cried, psh, that was it. So she, she cried and I'm like, leave him alone, fuck it, you know, don't press the charge. But I really wanted to see him thrown under the jail for that shit, but she talked to me and that did it. You say that once you came out with a story, you heard a lot of like big people, you know, sharing the same message, Success, successful yes, people. absolutely. Do, do you think like, uh, it's similar to, you know, growing up to, in Compton in a rough area or a tough place creates a tough person. But again, like with an abusive situation, you're in a tough environment. Yep. And some, like, for some people, they can be a victim to it or they also pro they can prosper out of it and become these tough people, successful people. Is, is there something to that that you, you, you can pin to that? Like, you know, for going for it yourself and speaking to other people? Well, you know, as horrible as my upbringing at home was, what it did, it made me able to cope what was going on outside my doors. Because whatever happened on the outside of the doors could not compare to what's happening on the inside of the doors. I, I looked at uh, Terrence Bud Crawford and his recent uh, fight and they told about, he talked about some of his growing up in his childhood and how his mother treated him, how she paid the kids in the neighborhood to beat her son. And this, and you, that type, how he grew up with that, and you see now what he does in a boxing ring, he destroys people. It, that toughness that she put in, I, it was, and he'll tell you, it was shitty the way he grew up, but damn, it paid off when he got ready to fight. It, it really paid off, so it, it was, a, I had a shitty upbringing, and there's a, a number of celebrities just, to name one, and I'm sure he won't mind, just reason I'm gonna name, is The Rock. The first time I met The Rock, uh, you know, I talked to him and I said, you know, me, Samson was with me and I said, my son idolizes you, he thinks you're the greatest thing on earth. And we, you know, every time he came out with a new doll, we had to go buy the doll. And you know, every time you come on TV, he's all, he knows all your cats. For, and I said, but me, I'm from your father's generation. So I looked up to your father. Your father was, you know, like, you are to my son. And he says, the first thing he said was, you didn't live with him. And I'm like, man, does that sound familiar? Because people thought my dad was, you know, an angel. He was the pastor of a church. He had a congregation, he had members, and they thought, you know, they looked up to him. And my thought to them was, you don't live with him. So I knew exactly what he meant. That's all he had to say, I knew exactly what he meant. He talked a little bit more, but that statement, when he said that, you don't live with him, that said it all for me. Thank you so much to CT for sharing with this story. I personally have not heard CT talk about his father in this way, and it was such a, an amazing moment for him to open up to us. 
he had so much respect for the work that we do, the research that we put in, and obviously the connection we've had for the years. And um, that was the biggest honor. I mean, for the past year, it's been one of the biggest honors. For C.T. Fletcher, somebody who basically helped launch our YouTube career at the start, to um, acknowledge us, the work we do, and the mission that we're on, 10 years later, is something special uh it meant a lot to me and it was all thanks to your support so thank you so much we are having an end of summer sale um link down below where it's buy one get one free on the hardest worker in the room rise and grind t-shirts inspire change t-shirts everything every single t-shirt is uh, buy one get one free using code sale and also the posters and the poster that reminds you you're gonna die every single day, and the not a journal, link down below with a heavy, heavy discount. Limited time only with a limited stock. So thank you to everybody who supported us. It means we can fly our film crew around the world. I am off to New York tomorrow to capture one of the best interviews we've had all year, and I hope you guys stay tuned with the subscribe button. You can hit the join button down below, and also we are now on Spotify, Apple, uh, all those places streaming the podcast every Monday with bonus episodes through the week. So if you want to hear this full podcast, it's been released on Monday. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a blessed and productive day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.